Hey everyone, a lot of people have been asking me how I do my fan cables on my radiators. Now in particular in these big full tower builds, case labs builds where you have a whole lot of fans, like some of them up to 20 fans, sometimes even more, fan cables can end up a real mess, mainly if you don't have custom lengths, it just, they're all over the place. and. I found a really clean way of setting up my fan cables on my radiators. It's a method I've been using for a few years now. And yeah, I'm going to take you through how I do this. So first of all, I have already modified the fans. Now you don't have to do this, but I've removed the sticker. I've replaced it with matte black vinyl because it's cleaner. And because I've sleeved all the way into the center of the fan, I've had to modify the fan frame. So I've cut a section out just here so that I can run the sleeve cable through. I've cut another section off just there. There used to be a little piece which went across there to hold the cable in position, but none of that fits anymore because the sleeve cable is so much thicker. But really you only have to sleeve to here. You don't have to sleeve right back into the center. So, you know, then you can avoid doing all of those fan mods and taking all of that extra time if you want to. The best place to run these cables is next to the fans, like this, all the way down the side of the fans, because you're not going to see it. You know, these, the sides of the fans in down the bottom here, you know, they're running across the, actually no, they're running along the bottom, so you're never going to see them again down there. And up here, they're going to be running along the back, so you're not really going to see them there either. And actually, they're going to be up in the top compartment, but even if you can see them, having four cables running kind of on top of each other or next to each other down the sides of the fans is beautifully clean. And you can actually cable tie them to the screws because there's enough of a gap usually on fans to get a cable tie around and to perfectly hold all of these into position. So before you do any mods to the cables, you need to figure out your routing always so that you can get your exact length. So what I do is I run them down the side here where I'm going to be running them. And I'm using Mod My Toys fan splitters. Now, if I wasn't using a, an Aquero 6 XT, I would have a Molex fan splitter. So it would go Molex to 4 3 pin. So that's one way of doing things. But if you want to have control, you know, with an Aquero or a fan controller, First of all, make sure whatever you're running them off can actually handle this many fans. The Aquero 6 XT certainly can. So I have a 4-pin PWM to 4 4-pin four PWM fan splitter. So from here, I will run back to the Aquero just with one cable all the way back to the Aquero. So what I'm doing here, I run the furthest one away to the closest connection on the splitter. So the one all the way up the back, I'm going to run to this connection just here. I've put a kink there so I know where to cut it. The next one to the next connector and then, you know, the closest one to the furthest connector back there like that. And they end up all laying on top of each other. You'll see shortly. It's a very clean way of doing things. But these are all still stock length. All I've done so far is just cut the connector off so that I can sleeve them. When you cut the connector off, you lose the pin out. So I've marked one of the wires, which goes on the side of the connector with the arrow. So I need to maintain this pin out when I cut it. And I do that by, well, luckily these four wires are actually stuck together side by side. So all you have to do is kind of feel your way back and make sure that they're facing the same direction. And then when you cut it, you can mark it again or remember which side it is. In the end, it's a 50-50 chance it ends up either way. It won't damage the fan if you get it the other way around in this case. Although, if you combine them in a certain way, like randomly, there, there is a certain way that may damage the fans. But yeah, try to remember that pinout. So I'm going to cut all of these off and get started. There's quite a bit of work involved in repinning these and putting the new connectors on and finishing off the sleeving. So first of all, I'm going to line up all of the fans again. I can't bolt them into position yet, 
because the case panel is actually going to go between the radiator and fans. And I'm just going to double check my lengths before I cut them because once I cut them, that's it. There's no going back. I'll need to make extensions if I get this wrong, but this one's correct. I'm going to cut it here. As soon as I've cut it, I've already memorized which side the pin is on, which needs to go into the, the, the side of the connector with the arrow, so that's all good. Now I'm going to trim back the sleeve. Actually, the wire that needs to go into the side of the pin with the arrow is also already marked, I've noticed, on these fans. So, yeah, I can just cut them and not worry about it. So whenever you cut sleeve, you always need to melt it. You can't just let it fray because it's going to make a real mess if you do. So now I'm separating all of the wires back just a little bit, just enough to be able to get in there to crimp on the pins. Then I'm going to strip all of the wires. And for this, I prefer to use this type of wire stripper just because it's so small, such a tiny gauge. Some of these are even below 22 gauge. I have my collection of pins over here. So female pins for this. Which way the pins face does actually matter. They're directional, unlike Molex, which just rotate so they can face any direction. But yeah, these are like ATX pins. They're totally directional. But the thing is, the wire gauge is so small that if you have to, you can easily rotate them 180 degrees. So don't worry about direction too much. You can sort that out later. So you'll have to check out some of my other wiring guides if you want to know how to crimp the pins you know, where to crimp them on the wire, how much of the wire to strip and all of that. All of that is extremely important. You know, this is not as simple as a lot of the people in the YouTube comments make out. So, yeah, I'm not showing you any close-ups, so you, you can't really see the detail of what I'm doing here. Check out, yeah, some of the other cable guides that I've done, in particular for this, the fan extension cable guide will teach you how to crimp the pins on, where to crimp them and all of that, which is very important information. Now it's definitely a good idea to test the fans as you go because you're definitely not going to be able to access this. Well, it's highly likely you're not going to be able to access this later because we're hiding it in a position where you're going to basically have to remove radiators to get to. So that one's fine, which I already knew because the wire was actually marked. But on this, this next one that I've just finished, the wire wasn't marked. So they're both all good. So obviously you should test before you put the heat shrink on, just in case you're wrong, to save you a little bit of time. So I've just trimmed back the sleeve, which is very important if it's too long and you just leave it, well, it's going to be very loose on the cable, which is going to look ugly. All of your sleeve needs to be extremely tight, as tight as you can get it, really. This is a brand new torch, so it's just working beautifully. These torches are great. I've noticed that since I've shown people this, now everyone is doing it, and that's great to see. Because Naked Flame is just a terrible way of doing this. Like, I did that for a long time, but compared to these torches, which are actually designed for heat shrink, it's, it just doesn't, it's so, so hard. These torches also allow you to get right inside of tight spots in your system. So, like, later on in the build, if you need to modify a cable, that's already in the system. You can actually do it without burning the surrounding components and melting everything. Okay, so that one is done. And again, while it's hot, we're going to bend it where we need it to go.
Okay, I've finished doing all of the cables, but I haven't yet done the cable management and tied them into position because I just wanted you to see how clean it can be without even being tied up. And it's just because the cable lengths are all correct and I've started to train them. But you can see all four of them are plugged into the splitter and they're basically just sitting in position without, yeah, without any ties or anything. But once I install the radiator and I'm able to install all of the screws and bolt everything into position, then I'll be able to complete the cable management. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's going onto the top panel of this SMA8. So there it is, it's all done. And you can see how clean this turns out. Now normally I don't need to use these cable management components. These are from ModSmart. I picked them up from Performance PCs. They have an excellent collection of them there. So yeah, I would grab some just in case if you're gonna be doing this, but I've only had to do it with these Corsair ML fans because it just, I don't know, the cable runs in a really weird way. Normally it runs down this section here, but yeah, this runs out across this open area here. It's just an unusual design. It works fine with the fans stock. So actually if you just sleeve up to here, you can avoid this because it will be clamped down by the little clip that we've actually had to cut off to fit the sleeve. And then I wouldn't actually need to use these cable management components because I, I can do it without the cable management components, but every now and then it just, you know, it's just going to pop out of there a lot more easily. And then this whole, all of the cables kind of pop up and they sit up a little bit higher. So, yeah, we want to keep them in position where it's really nice and clean. You can, you know, from the front, you're never going to see them. The top panel is going to be on, covering it all up. And then they all wrap around nicely side by side and plug into the splitter, which is going to run to the Aquero 6 XT which is actually going to be right here. So it's, well this one at least is very close. So that sums up this video. Thanks for watching and remember that none of this would be possible without our customers and our patrons.